Hello and welcome back to a brand new episode of Living with a Rotary featuring Felix and also Dan's lovely R3. You'll recognize this car. Now in today's episode, we're going to be exploring the differences between a street ported RX-8 and a bridge ported RX-8. But first, let's listen to the noise. <laughs> Well, not quite, because this is what we've got coming for you in today's episode. Anyway, let's do something I haven't done in a long time. Drive the nuts off street ported Felix, because for the first time in a long time, things are looking good. Yep, that's right. We have a working rotary, people. I've been reading quite a few of your comments. Lots of people loving the series so much. There's a few people in the comments. Oh, rotary, what a shit box. Oh, it's such a crap car. Why are you investing so much time and money? <laughs> you don't know anything about cars, buddy. Rotaries are awesome. Felix is proof of that. Now, moving very swiftly on, I want to address the fact that this is probably one of the best cars you can buy for £5,000. Which is roughly what it's cost to get Felix to his current standard, the exact price of which I'll work out and tell you later in the series. You can probably buy a really ropey Boxster S 350Z you can get, but there's nothing that feels this light, this agile, and it puts such a smile on your face. What's more, the RX-8 is, in my opinion, the best looking car of the bunch, especially with the addition of this new set of 18-inch bronze rotor force wheels. And let's not forget, it's also the only car with four seats. You can put actual humans behind me. I'm not talking like short people like me. I'm talking, do you reckon a Josh could fit behind me? A Josh could, no. Yeah, uh, he's massive. He is massive, yeah. He's oh, you're a, the same height, yeah, we're the same height, yeah. <clears throat> anyway. There's one elephant in the room we need to address, and that is last week's dyno failure due to a broken secondary shutter valve solenoid. Well, a few days later, I went back to Surrey Rolling Road, and as you can see, Felix's street ported 13B is doing us very proud. Oh, f yeah! <laughs> this is probably one of the best engines in the UK right now. All the tolerances are all like. Oh, it feels so good. Oh, I feel so tight, but not too tight. And I'm quite loose, but not too loose. You know, I'm limbered up, ready for the gym, ready for some action, ready for some second gear, 9,000 RPM, get it in gear. Oh, that was awkward. It actually amazes me that this car is legal in the UK because it's so antisocial and it consumes so much fuel and so much oil. You might be one of the reasons it gets bad. <laughs> But legal it is, and after living with this one for a few months and finally experiencing the driving euphoria that is the RX-8, my god are we lucky. Anyway, enough about Felix, the street ported RX-8. Let's now head over to Dan's bridge ported RX-8 and also lightened rotors and have a drive and see, is it as awesome as Felix? I suspect so. But before I get to experience Josh's braps, here's the main man himself to explain the differences between street ported versus bridge ported rotary engines and to talk us through light and rotating assemblies as featured in Dan's car. I'd like to talk to you about the uh, different types of porting on a Renesis engine. This iron here is completely stock, none of the ports are touched. The auxiliary port and the secondary port and the exhaust port, all completely untouched. And next to it we have a street ported and bridge ported iron. With a street port, the timing is prolonged on the auxiliary port. That allows for a longer duration of intake of air. What that does is it increases a bit of your mid-range power and allows you to have a little bit more power up top as well. And on the exhaust port, the timing is advanced slightly. And what that does is allows exhaust gases to escape a little bit earlier than it would on a stock iron. The same thing is done to the center iron, the primary port. Uh, and the exhaust port. Generally speaking, stock RX-8s, they make between 160 and 170 at the wheels. So you can expect an increase of 10 to 15 horsepower. Now, a full bridge is created from these two eyebrows here. The bridge is actually where the apex seal is allowed to run freely across the ports without falling in. But ultimately, it's the additional holes here, which are eyebrow shaped and 
that allows for more air to come in, which means you can add more fuel, which means more power in essence. Think of it as like a high lift cam. You're um, increasing the diameter of a hull. Peak torque has shifted further up the rev range as well, uh, just because of that overlap in juice from the porting. As a result of that, peak power is shifted a little bit more as well. Figure wise, that can see anything from about 190 at the wheels to 215 from what we've seen on, on our dyno. With these ports, you're just going to get a nice steady idle up. Like... Now, if you went balls deep into a full bridge, you'd expect an idle to be like. And now onto something else cool about big build rotaries like Dan's, light and rotating assemblies and how they work. This is sent away to a machining shop, materials removed from the faces of the rotor to reduce the rotating mass of the rotating assembly. And what that allows is freer rev, so it's going to rev much quicker, a lot smoother as well. Another good thing about this is that you can take the rev range higher as well. Like it'll rev freely to 10,000 RPM without any hesitation whatsoever. In terms of power gains, it's very, very slight. You might only get a few horsepower, but the drive will be smoother and there'll be less load on the rotating assembly as well. It's like driving on air. That makes no sense whatsoever, but it's something you have to experience to know the difference. And now back to the action. Thank you very much for letting me drive your R3 again. It's been over a year. Tell everyone first, Everything was well, and then everything was not well a few months later. What happened? Basically, me and my friend were out driving around Silverstone, coming out of Stowe, and the engine had changed, power died, and I started to failure. Whisked it off to the boys up at Rotary Revs. One of the vacuum lines on the upper intake manifold had broken. Probably caused a hot spot inside the engine, caused the side seal to fail prematurely. Damn. <laughs> and here we are. As you can hear... Brap, 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 brap. So Josh did the braps. And these braps are the result of a bridge-ported engine's eyebrows, which open a few degrees before the exhaust ports fully close, causing an intake and exhaust overlap. This is the first time that I'm ever going to drive a bridge port, let alone a bridge port with light and everything. Oh wow, that, that already feels so much smoother. Oh, bah, 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 bah. that's so good! And this is running Racing B, 3-inch header, the dual resonated decal the same cat back that you're running on Felix. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was 10,000 RPM! <laughs> oh yeah, it's just so much smoother, isn't it, the bridge port? Yeah. And with, because everything's lightened as well, it just picks up more quickly. Felix takes a little yeah. longer just to just to really get above 5,000 RPM. This is more willing. However, it doesn't feel more powerful. A normal bridge port without race extension, you're probably looking at maybe 215 wheel horsepower. So you're talking maybe 20 more than Felix. But with the race extension, at the moment, this is putting down 191 wheel horsepower. Josh and I are sort of trying to experiment with maybe long tube headers and another, other crazy stuff. The best thing about this is the... <laughs> <laughs> In terms of driver enjoyment then, it's clear to see that an RX-8 still tops the charts. And as for the bridge port, this takes the rotary to an even higher, more explosive and louder level. So think of a street ported engine like Felix's as a wicked head massage, while a bridge port enters stage left in a crotchless cat suit and starts rubbing your feet for full body euphoria. So are you happy that you went with the bridge port? Are there any downsides that you know of? When you're properly on it, the fuel efficiency does go down even further. Yeah, what? Um, wow. Which I didn't think I'd ever say. I mean, before bridge port, I managed to average 4.8, I think, on around Silverstone miles per gallon this will get you comfortably down to a 4.0 and the <laughs> oh, I'm sorry this is cut for a little while nine ten there we go <laughs> this would munch most cats the cat is well out, the <laughs> well out of the bag I can see how it wouldn't be right for everyone yeah but there's no reason that anybody who is using it for fast road or track use I don't see why you would 
there are quicker cars round corners in the straight lines or otherwise I wouldn't have one. For me though, the Streetport offers everything I'd want from a rotary. Strong linear power, an awesome noise as standard, occasional flames and an engine that can be economical when given a chance. So there you go ladies and gentlemen, the differences between a bridge-ported RX-8 and a street-ported RX-8. I mainly just wanted to do this just to show you some flames and pops and bangs and everything. It's a, it's a good excuse. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you check out the rest of the series by clicking this link. Subscribe to Car Throttle over here. And don't forget to check out the Car Throttle shop where you can buy lovely wheels like these down there. Anyway, Josh, play. Oh yeah, cool. Bye.